So hey everyone, this is the culmination of everything we've talked about in this unit so far. We've talked about light, we've talked about how it travels, how it interacts with your eye and gives you the different images we see, how we collect that light through different telescopes. And once we look at all this light, what are we able to do with it? We can start seeing further and further and further away um, because we're able to interpret light at a greater and greater distance. And so we start to wonder, well, you know, if you can see all that so far away, where did all that come from? And thus we end up with something called cosmology. So we're trying to figure out where everything began and where the universe might be going. Yep. So the first thing is we have to talk about the universe being everything that we can observe. And when we look at everything we observe, we see that the universe has an age. We can put an age to that, just like we did with light traveling to us. We know it takes time. So the furthest objects gave off light 13.8 billion years ago. Is that what they look like today? No. That isn't what they look like today. That's what they looked like 13 billion years ago. They have been changing. They've been evolving. But they're so far away, it just takes that much time for light to get to us. Which means there's a limit. There's, there's an edge to the observable universe. Right. Now, we don't know how big the actual universe is, but what we can see is this big. So since the universe has an age, then we want to say, well, when did the universe begin? How do we know that the universe began? And so we can kind of rewind the clock and come with our best theory of how everything began. Well, one of the things that you need to understand is the difference between a theory and a law. A law is something that's been proven. A theory is something that's backed up by a lot of evidence, but it's not necessarily proven to be true. So, you know, it's a good hypothesis. It's it got is. lots and lots of evidence, but we're not sure if this applies everywhere. The law of gravity applies everywhere in the universe. Our current understanding is that, well, if everything has an age, let's rewind that to when there was nothing, but all the matter compacted into one tiny location how small is that location? Infinitely small, really. I mean, if you mathematically reverse engineer the universe the way that it is moving, it does go back to a point, and there's so much mass packed into that point that it would be, well, almost unmeasurable. So the universe began in what we call a big bang. Everything was compacted into the tiniest immeasurable spot, and something kicked off the universe. Something made the Big Bang, bang. And nobody knows really what that is. Once the Big Bang occurred, all matter in the universe has expanded outwards, and that's kind of what we're looking at today. But if we're saying that the space and time have expanded in all directions, how do we know that things are actually moving? Well, we have to use something we call the Doppler effect. Yeah, everybody has experienced the Doppler effect uh, with sound. You hear a motorcycle drive by or a siren from a police car as it goes by. <laughs> and you can hear the pitch of that sound drop as it passes. So the siren is always giving off the same noise, but if that siren heads towards you, the waves are bunching together, which gives higher frequency or higher pitch. Higher pitch. And if it drives away from you, what about those waves? Uh, they are seemingly spreading further apart, and so the pitch drops. So in this case, we have neither object moving toward the other object, and therefore all the waves are well, basically doing what they do when they're emitted. You can see that the size doesn't change uh, with respect to either object. So if we take that star and we have it move towards us, explain what you're seeing. Well, I'm seeing the waves that are being emitted from that object bunching together and that gives them a much shorter wavelength which gives them higher frequency. So if something was given off, let's say yellow light, and that light now shifts to a higher frequency, smaller wavelength, it would appear what color? Um, it would move towards the blue end of the spectrum which, uh, well, might be green or blue. And if the star moves away from us, you can see that the waves behind it are starting to spread out. So when they spread out, that means a much larger wavelength and larger wavelengths, red or light, than yellow is a red shift. So what you can do is you could look in a telescope and every direction seems to have this red shift. And that's what a guy named Edwin Hubble noticed when he was looking through his telescope and through his spectroscope that was attached, that every direction that he looked, he saw a shift in the red direction. 
So every galaxy is redshifted, which means if you look in terms of wavelengths, must be moving further away. So that means the galaxy and the universe, in fact, because even other galaxies are redshifted, is expanding. If you reverse expansion, that's how we get the idea that everything was together at one point. If everything's expanding right now, then everything must have been together at one location. That's where we get our Big Bang. If you look at random empty spaces in the universe, if you don't look at a galaxy or star and there's just a dark region in between there, what we actually do see is that the vacuum of space is not completely cold, devoid of everything it actually has a temperature. So out of the edge of everything is this thing called cosmic background radiation. It's sort of like a light that we can't see with our eyes, but we can certainly measure it with telescopes. And it has a temperature of like three Kelvin. Or negative 270 degrees Celsius, so it's extremely cold. Mm -hmm. And the wavelengths of light that come from that are around the millimeter range, which actually put it in the microwave spectrum. So this is kind of the, the heat signature, the glow of the Big Bang. When the bang happened, it was extremely hot, and as the universe has cooled off, this is the remnant heat left behind. So now that we know that there was an origin to the universe, we can then talk about the fate, kind of the end of the universe, and we've got kind of three options for you here. Well, our three options are the flat universe, the closed universe, and an open universe. In a flat universe, we're talking that we have a initial Big Bang, the universe started to expand, stars started to form, galaxies started to form, and eventually that universe reaches a point when the expansion doesn't really increase anymore. So the universe gets to a certain size, and that is it. It might be a certain distance wide, but there's no more energy left from the bang. The energy has run out, and we're going to kind of have the same shape of the universe for the end of time. Now in a closed universe, it's a little bit different than that. It kind of does the same thing, except there is a point where the universe be reaches a, a limit and then begins to close back up again. It begins to go back to that original singular point, and they call that the big crunch. And what would cause that crunch? Like what would slow down expansion? Well, you would have to have enough mass for the gravity of all of these objects that are expanding to pull back together again. And if we actually add up all the mass that we can visibly see, unfortunately it's not enough. It is not enough. So, so right that, now, closed universe doesn't seem like a great possibility. Everything that we think is nothing may be something. So the emptiness of space, the blackness of space between right. stars mm -hmm. is something called dark matter. Matter, mass, that we just can't see, that light can pass through and doesn't interact with, but if it has matter, then it has some mass and it could cause some gravity. That is correct. And and enough to pull it back together. Well, then the opposite of that would be the open universe. What's going on in the open universe? In the open universe, the flat universe never occurs. It just continually expands until it runs out of energy. Expand, that means that there's more expansion energy than there is gravitational force to bring it back together. There must be something that's making this thing continue to expand. There must be some energy that we can't see. Which brings us to our current scientific consensus of how the universe began and where it is going. It's known as the inflationary Big Bang model. That, yes, there was a Big Bang that happened around 13.8 billion years ago, but that expansion happened super rapidly. It'd be like me blowing up a balloon, and then fraction and fraction of a second after I started blowing the balloon up, it was already almost full size. So one of the things that happened when Hubble was looking at the expanding universe is he noticed further and further objects got away, the faster they were going because he saw a greater redshift. So they were expanding at a much greater rate. They were moving away from us. It was hard for people to kind of fathom how a universe could be expanding. What could actually be causing it to continue to accelerate because acceleration requires a force. In that darkness where we said there might be dark matter, maybe there's also this thing called dark energy. This energy that's pushing the expansion and actually making the expansion not just go away at a steady rate, but actually expanding space and time away from each other in a faster and faster rate. What you want to understand is that this is the Big Bang theory and model of how the universe began. There's a lot of evidence. We've given you the evidence of how this possibly could have occurred. And this is what the scientific community has agreed on right now 
as to how the universe began and where the universe is going. But no one knows for sure whether or not this is actually true. It is the most accepted theory. It has the most evidence. But we could find out tomorrow that it's all wrong. So as of today, this is our current model. This is the guy. And this is what we use to now look at all the things that are enclosed in our observable universe and try to understand what is happening out there. Until next time.